to do that. Thank you very much. It's very nice. Look. Look, when you do... You make me feel when you... When you do... Look, when you do that, you make me feel obligated. Like, now I have to entertain you. Thank you. That's very nice of you. What's right. going on? Just after St. Patrick's Day? Nice crowd. Before we start... To, no. Today is Wednesday, March 18th, 1987. Now, remember that. You'll never know when it'll come up during an investigation. <laughs> remember you were here. The, the fellow in the second row with the wearing the T-shirt that says, Hagler is a wimp. There's somebody backstage who wants to see you. <laughs> Let's see move. Well, if it isn't Mr. Fashion Plate. <laughs> Hey, let's put on a show. <laughs> you love it. This is nice. Is that a, is that a coat or a sweater or uh, no. something got out of hand or what? I don't know. Well, one of my horses is very cold tonight, isn't it? So. <laughs> what do you say? Anyway, uh, Joe, oh, how do you feel after St. Patrick's Day? Did you celebrate? Good. Yeah. Mr. Irishman over here. Ed had a, had a rough morning today. He, he woke up about five with the sound of a snail crossing over his driveway. <laughs> Which will teach you not to sleep in the driveway. I told you. Get home. And last night at Orion's Tavern in Encino, Ed was given the first winner of the Full of Blarney Award uh, for saying the lines, you may have already won $10 million. And you cannot be turned down for this policy for any reason. <laughs> I know a lot of you are out of town, and if you plan to go down... <laughs> Obviously got out just in time. <laughs> if you're going down to San Juan Capistrano tomorrow, yep. isn't tomorrow the day the yes. swallows... St. Joseph's Day. ...return? Mm -hmm. Return to Capistrano. So if you go down there, you know that big uh, cardboard sun shield you have? Yeah. Put that on the outside of your car. <laughs> you know who's big in the news? Barbara Walters. Yeah, some of the journalists say she, as a journalist, shouldn't it? Apparently, she brought a secret message uh, to Reagan from an Iranian arms dealer. And it didn't end there. We found out today she brought a love letter from the Ayatollah's son to Fawn Hall. <laughs> You know the Ayatollah had his son Skip? Yeah. Skip Khomeini. Barbara is not the only journalist involved in the scandal. We found out that Geraldo Rivera just announced he's going to open Oliver North's safe. Here's something that may interest you or may not, depending on where you live. The Senate is voting, I guess, today about raising the speed limit federally. Right. You know, we have a national federal speed limit of 55 miles an hour. A lot of people who live in western states, like Arizona and Nevada, don't drive 55. Um, how many think the speed limit should... Let's take a poll. We have a pretty definitive crowd here. Uh, except the guy who got out of town. Uh, how many think it should be stay at 55? How many think you should raise it to 65? How many of you just want to get the hell off the Ventura Freeway and don't care? <laughs> Have you tried to drive to work at 55? No. God forbid yeah. you get one of those 18-wheelers behind you. <laughs> Boy, they change a tire at 55 in California. <laughs> Interesting item in the paper. Are you familiar with the Arab nation of Oman? Well, it's one of those Arab nations over there. And Sultan Qaboos... Ibn said today, decreed that no man should pay more than 200 rials for a wife. Yeah. Now, apparently, that's the custom of you pay for your bride. And that's about $5,160 for a bride. Not a bad price. I'm telling you. I'm telling you, that's a hell of a bargain, 200. Yeah. 200 reals. Maybe we can pick one up on the Home Shopping Network or something like that. <laughs> Did you see this nice story in the paper about the Russian sailors that 
Uh, we're back in a cargo ship. I guess it was off the coast of what? New York or something? And their cargo ship sank and they were rescued and they went to the White House yesterday, greeted by President Reagan, and they all got new suits. They lost all their belongings. They went and bought them new suits at a discount store. And they went to visit the president. The president said, uh, Brooks Brothers? And they said, no, c &R. <laughs> It's a local joke. So here's some fun news. The Heart and Lung Association just announced that Los Angeles has the worst air in the country. <laughs> you can't win these days. If sex doesn't kill you, the heavy breathing will. <laughs> To give you an idea how bad the air is in Los Angeles, we just found out that the mayor is white. <laughs> you know who liked that joke? Tom Bradley, I think, will like that joke. Let's hope Tom Bradley likes that joke. Now, I mentioned this last night. Uh, you probably saw it. It's big news on television. They have a new product now called uh, Minoxidil. You familiar with that? said that it's gonna help guys grow hair. Yeah. But they said it is not a miracle cure. But some people apparently have had pretty good success. Because marvelous Marvelin Hagler wanted to be introduced tonight as Curly Hagler. <laughs> <laughs> now here's the, did you read what's happening in Pennsylvania about the birds? Some town in Pennsylvania, I don't know what it is, having trouble with birds, apparently they're getting drunk. <laughs> they get in there on fermented plums or something in an orchard and they're carousing. Nothing worse than drunken birds. <laughs> Mockingbirds are mean drunks, whether you know that or not. <laughs> Mockingbird. One, one yell at a cat today. Hey, mouse breath, I hope you choke on a fur ball. <laughs> now, here's this weird news item. It was in the paper today. Apparently, a few years ago, William F. Buckley, in his column in today's paper, said that a couple of years ago, a woman wrote him, she was married, age 39, and said she wished to become a mother and wanted William F. Buckley to be the father of her child. Interesting, now that would have been some baby. Uh, I can just see the baby and say, the baby's saying, Baba, the baby would probably say, Mother, I anticipate nutrition. <laughs> We got a good show tonight. In addition to Mr. Alan Thick, who's here tonight. <laughs> Young lady I have not met. She's one of the regulars on Perfect Strangers, I believe, the television show. Rebecca Arthur is here. And <laughs> marvelous Marvin Hagler. Later on, Admiral John Poindexter and Oliver North will come out here and sing, Ah, I Remember It Well. <laughs> so stay where you are. We'll be Attention shoppers. No. <laughs> what do you have? Uh, you an have anniversary have. announcement? But the Tonight Show. Is your like... anniversary? No, 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 no. How no, long have no. you been married now? Eleven years. Good mind. That's good. The Tonight Show. <laughs> the number you've never heard about, is it? <laughs> Too shit. <laughs> what did you, you get the white tie? What did I've never seen guys wear white ties anymore. I don't know. That's it. Sal, our wardrobe man, put that together. So, yeah. yeah. All right. All right. The Tonight... I'll start again. The Tonight Show. Am I interrupting you? No. <laughs> never. Would like to congratulate WTVA-TV Channel 9. WTA-TV? WTVA-TV. WTVA. Yeah. Tupelo. It's like, you... like the Tennessee, Tennessee Valley Authority, TVA. Yeah. You were there near Tupelo, weren't you, Mississippi? I spent some time, yes. Sure. Jackson, Peelahatchee, Biloxi. Well, this is Tupelo, Mississippi, on the occasion of their 30th anniversary. What station is that? WTVA TV. Good, okay. Congratulations, WTVA. Television Network, 30 years. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. 
Did you celebrate last night? Not any more than the ordinary, no. <laughs> well, that could be. <laughs> Had a nice, quiet dinner. It was very right. nice. A little toast the, uh... We toasted the, uh, St. Patrick's wishes. Toasted yes. old Aaron, did you? Yes, we did. Uh, every, everywhere yesterday, everybody had green on. Do you know how many people in the United States claim some Irish ancestry? I had these figures last night, but we had enough material, so we saved it, and I thought we'd bring it over for an extra day here. <laughs> Sometimes you do that. You just get overloaded with comedy material, and you... Well, you got <clears throat> so many laughs last night, you couldn't get to it. Laugh stretched yeah. out, and we had this left yeah. over. How many people would you say claim some Irish ancestry? We have, what, 220 million people in the yeah. United States? You say, what, half? He half. says half. You say, what? I'll say half. More? No, no, not that many. 40 million people. I thought there'd be it's more. still a lot. Now, here's, here's something that'll fool you. The state with the largest Irish population is... Massachusetts. No. You wouldn't guess. No. Now, I would have said New York. It's California. California, New York, and Pennsylvania. Wow. I wouldn't have guessed that. According to the Irish Council in Los Angeles, we've had three presidents with pure Irish heritage. I guess that's both mother and father, mm -hmm. right? John Kennedy, Richard Nixon, and Ronald Reagan. Yeah. You said you're half, half yeah, Irish, right? Presidents with some Irish ancestry include Andrew Jackson, James Polk, James Buchanan, Wilson, Andrew Johnson, Chester Allen Arthur, William McKinley, Grover Cleveland, and Harry Truman. Nine Irishmen signed the Declaration of Independence. Did you know that? No. Four were born in Ireland. Now, would you say uh, Marlon Brando was Irish? No. He is. <laughs> Phil Donahue? Phil, no. Don well, Phil Donahue. Oh, sure, he'd say, yes. be Grace Kelly, George Bernard Shaw, Paul McCartney. Most surprising, Alex Haley and Muhammad Ali have Irish ancestry. True. <laughs> That's what it said. That could be, could sure, it? Could certainly. It? That's what it said. We wouldn't do that. We found some pictures of lesser-known Irishmen, not as famous as <laughs> but have an interesting history. We thought you might uh, like to see some of these. It's leftover from last night, so... I hate leftover comedy material, don't you? <laughs> This is, uh, this is Lloyd McBridges, <clears throat> who started the custom of wearing a deep-sea diving suit on St. Patrick's Day in case you pass out in the men's room. <laughs> this is the famous Irish dentist, Dr. Brendan McLipschitz, <laughs> who came up with the most disgusting St. Patrick's Day button, floss me, I'm Irish. <laughs> I'm editing here. This is uh, with San Francisco's famous Irish tenor, Scream McQueen. His biggest hit was when Irish guys are smiling. <laughs> this was an old 18th century photo taken in a Dublin jail. The man on the right is Brian Obese, who single-handedly caused the potato famine by eating every French fry in Ireland. Most people don't know what caused it. They know it's crop failure. It was Brian Obese. My favorite. This is Denny O'Dull. The 12th straight St. Patrick's Day, he's uh, spent sitting in his rec room waiting for Marvin Hamlish to show up. I love that one. I don't know why it seems so silly. What? Last night would have been a scream. Last night would have been great. Okay. This is Dr. Tom McCann, the physical the physician. <laughs> The physician responsible for giving Amelda Marcos her annual physical. <laughs> the man on the right was the only leprechaun outlaw in the Old West, Jesse James Joyce. <laughs> Here he asks a fellow gang member if he's seen his wife. <laughs> this is Malachi Matoxic, the head of the nuclear reactor outside Dublin, Three Mile Ireland. Here he gets ready for their employee St. Patrick's Day uh, parade by dyeing their uh, plutonium green. Nothing, okay? Let's see. Okay. All right. These two Irish brothers open up the first... <laughs> Opened up the first female impersonator bar in Ireland called La Cage O'Reilly. <laughs> this was a very Irish guy, Patrick J. O'McPaddy's pig. Now, his busiest workday is March 18th. 
You can see this picture here. He offers same-day service for livers, in by nine, out by five. <laughs> Seems to be diving, doesn't it? <laughs> this is Fauna Hall. Who is, who is the cook at an Irish pub in Washington? Here she is at a paper shredder preparing the chef special, Oliver North Stew. <laughs> Little known Irish. <laughs> I don't like that. Waiting for. Why do I like the ones that don't get I anything? Don't know. The 11th straight St. Patrick's Day waiting for Marvin Hamleys to show up. <laughs> And it got, it got the same reaction when I said it again. And I read it, and I it shows you the sense of humor that different people have is, is unique in our world. Right? Yes. One person out of 500, and I'm that yeah, dumb, yeah. dummy who found that one funny. I sat in my office, and it, that's funny. I come out here, and 500 people says it stinks. What is that? Is that they were right. You think we're right? <laughs> Obviously, they were right. No, not tonight. <laughs> no, you've done too many Oliver North jokes. Uh, marvelous Marvelin Hagler will be out here. We have Rebecca Arthur and Alan Thick with us tonight. So stay where you are and we'll be right back. Marvin Hagler is the undisputed middleweight champion of the world. Uh, of 62 fights, he's won 52 have been by knockout. Uh, <laughs> as you know, he's in training now for a long-awaited match with Sugar Ray Leonard, which will be in Las Vegas April 6th at Caesars Palace. Would you welcome marvelous Marvin Hagler. <laughs> Before we start talking, yeah, before we start talking, curly remark back there. Yeah, but... no, I don't. I don't know if you saw this picture or not. No, that's, here's that's a man whose comedy point. opinion I respect. <laughs> <laughs> this is Denny O'Dill. This is the 12th straight year he's been waiting for Marvin Hamlish to show up. That's Marvin Hamlish. Yeah. Right. Okay. <laughs> 501 against Zippo. <laughs> Okay, how you doing? You getting ready Very for the, good. For the big uh, one, huh? Feeling lean and mean, uh, <laughs> you know? Oh, yeah, I'm ready. Uh, 62 fights people, you had. Yeah, 62. 62. 52 by knockouts, and uh, it's going to be 53. Yeah. Oh, sure. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Sounds very good. Uh, how, do you, how do you get psyched up for a fight? Well, you know, what isolation you... is big for me, you know? Yeah. Uh, getting away from my family, my friends, close friends, etc. cetera. Uh, putting myself in jail is the way that I call it. Yeah? And uh, I'm looking forward to getting out of there, really. You really do? No you... vacation. No friends, no, no family, no, nothing. And, and it works very, very reasonable for me. Some fighters are different. They have to have a lot of people around them yeah. and uh, a lot of action going on. Myself, uh, I basically just want to concentrate just on my opponent and, and get my conditioning together. Can I ask you a personal question? Sure. I'm not doing this to be titillating or anything, but there was a controversy that athletes, before they fought or went into battle, uh, would have nothing to do with women at all because exactly. it would diminish their strength. And then there's other people who say that. Why are you happen. talking about that now? You're oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry, that's right. You've been in isolation. Bad, bad, bad. <laughs> But you feel that it does diminish your... Uh... Yeah, it does. It helps, yeah. uh, you know, your mental capacity, really. Because uh, when I get out of this one here, I'm going to feel strong like bull. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now, look, this is, this is a big purse. Does the money yeah. help? Does that get you ready? Well, you know, it's not the money matter when this fight here in particular, because uh, this is a wide world event here, something I've been waiting for. And, and to Ray, I think it's a personal thing, because I believe he's on an eagle thing myself. Really? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to knock that chip off his shoulder, you yeah. know. Don't you like, don't you like, uh, don't you like Sugar Ray? No, really, you know, I think he's trying to kill me with kindness. You know, he's been saying really nice, positive things, and... Uh, you think that's just psychological like that. stuff? Psychological. He's trying to psych himself up. Uh, I'm already psyched. Uh, I realize the job I got to do, John. I'm yeah. ready to go to work. Two more weeks, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, you guys wouldn't go out to dinner together, uh, and even though you're going to well, fight you know, or something like that. You know, they told like me, that. you're making $21 million. After I finish with him, I might come after you. <laughs> Don't don't believe the thing. Don't believe the things you read. Now, <laughs> they printed you're going to get 12 
million bucks for this right, fight. Right, you know, Guaranteed. Feel... Now, even though there's a stinker, do you still get the 12 mil? Yes, uh, you know, it's for a change. Just things are looking my way, you know. Yeah. Uh, contract came along very well. Uh, if it was like four years ago, which we tried to get yeah. uh, Leonard back then, uh, Leonard probably would have made 10. I most likely probably would have got two just for the opportunity. Yeah. But uh, I think now that the popularity is a lot equal because people know him, they know me. And uh, I think on his part, though, more people feeling sorry for him than uh, giving him credit for what he's about. But You're really doing a number on him tonight, aren't I, you? I don't, uh, you know, I respect the man's boxing ability and everything, and uh, I'm planning on going in there and ripping his head off. That's, that's <laughs> fine. That's it. Okay. Fine we'll take a break, and we're coming right back. Don't go away. <laughs> We're talking with marvelous Marvin Hagler about his upcoming bout with Sugar Ranch. What, in April? Uh, April 6th. April 6th. When do you stop the heavy training, or have you? Well, no. Right now, I'm in uh, great preparation right now. Yeah. Um, putting all our strategy together now. I got the body in, in, in the mind in, in great yeah. condition. Is it now possible to overtrain? You know, yes, it is. You know, uh, this is the longest time that I've been in a training camp, uh, two and a half months. And right. uh, it feels very good. I think that uh, the time is going to work it to towards my advantage. Um, the preparation that I'm doing right now is strategy. You know, Leonard's fast on his on his feet. And you his review films? You, you go and watch some Not of Not really. I kind of like been watching Leonard since he first came out of the Olympics. So I kind of like know what he's basically about, you know. It's not too much difference that he's going to do, yeah. uh, except uh, maybe come right at me, which I love, because then maybe I can end it and go home early. <laughs> yeah, you know, I, I like to do that. But, uh, People don't I'm, want it to end early, do they? I mean, no, they paid a lot of money I'm ringside seats. I'm a very hard, uh, physical, strong fight and a smart fight. Yeah. Yeah, you know, uh, Lynn is intelligent, but... Now, uh, you're two years older than Sugar Ray, right? Does that right. make a difference? No, age doesn't. I think that I have the experience and... Uh, Plus, you know, by the age, the maturity would be a lot bigger and, uh, and a lot greater. And behind me being stronger. Okay, if I had to say now, uh, analyze yourself, your greatest, greatest strength. Or your greatest, greatest strength. I think it would have to be both mental and physical. All right. You, know. you have any weaknesses at all with you? I don't believe so. You know, I got power on both hands, you know. Yeah. One is K, the other one's O. Yeah. You know, if this one don't get you, that one will. You know, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know it. What kind of what kind of diet? What, what do you eat? Well, basically, you know, I don't have too much. Uh, when I'm in, I'm working out with five different guys now, yeah. so uh, it's able me to keep my weight down. Uh, you ever been I'm... decked when you're sparring? No, I try to keep it that way, John. Really? <laughs> no, your sparring uh, partners are not inadvertently. Th no, but I get them being mean. I let them know that they're not on no vacation there, and I got some uh, good sparring partners that's got the lateral movement just like Leonard. I think they're even faster than Leonard. Yeah. And uh, you know, they're not as good looking as Leonard. You know, he's so pretty. <laughs> <laughs> But, uh, He's a good-looking man, isn't he? Yeah, I like Sugar Ray is a good-looking you know? guy. Yeah, you know, you gotta smash the oh, face, yeah. you know? <laughs> Yeah. Now he's had, you know, he's, how about the eye? He had an eye problem. That's one of the reasons he said he retired. Then he had, a, what, a detached retina or something right. like that? Now, well, does, that know, does that bother you at all? No, it don't, John, because, you know, he made the choice. He's the one that, uh, he gave the challenge out. Yeah. He wanted to fight. So uh, I figured that he must have went through on, on knowing all about his health and everything else before he, uh, yeah. he challenged me. I guess they wouldn't allow him to yeah, fight. I let him dangle problem. out there a little bit, too, until I was ready to see how it feels, you know, like he oh. did me. Well, I see. You know? <laughs> We talked about now, I, I did a joke in a monologue about the new product they have. Uh, your hair? Yeah, you, for, now you, you shave your hair, uh, yes, hair don't you? You have hair. Yeah, I've been doing it since I was 16 years old. It's How'd you start? Been, it's been a good luck charm to me. I started yeah. back in the amateurs, and uh, now the people kind of put it on me because they recognize me as the bald-headed fighter. Yeah. I don't know. Now you have to do your shave it every day? Sure. You know, uh, every day, sometimes every other day. It's by choice, not by nature, though. Yeah. I told you. <laughs> Suppose it didn't come back. Would that bother well, you? I've been looking for a big commercial, though, I tell you. Something, you know. <laughs> John Macro making all this money, and uh, I think I got more to shave than he does, yeah. you know? Okay. Make a, predict make a prediction on the fight. If you had to make How long is it going to go? It's well, scheduled for 15. It's No, 12. 12. It's 12, right? Yeah, okay. Leonard won at 12. Right. You know. <laughs> so that's me. Well, you know, uh, I feel though that the way I see the fight mm -hmm. is that Leonard wants to dictate the fight and come right at me. The fight can end early. I see. But if he wants to run like a rabbit, which I anticipate a little bit, he can prolong the fight, but it only means that he's going to take more punishment. I'm ready. I'm not a bragger and I'm not anything like that, but I'm ready to fight. you got to have that kind of confidence you're going out there, right? Anyway, it's always great to have you on the show. My pleasure. Hey, can I say hello to my wife and kids? I haven't seen them in two, two and a half months. <laughs> <laughs> Don't laugh. Well, no, we're going to hold them. <laughs>
I'm going to chain you to this chair until, until the fight is over. Good shape. Okay. Coming at you. Anyway, uh, it's marvelous to uh, watch you uh, pursue your, your craft. You're, uh, you're great at it. It's always great to have you here. have a gift here for you. You brought me a gift? Yeah, this is um, your official War II hat. War II. That's right, because that's what this fight is, War II. All Purge right. was war. Now this, this is, is War II. <laughs> you're a good promoter, oh, yeah. Marvin. You know it, hey. This comes from my <laughs> It's come from my store, Marvelous Marvin Hagler Sports My Novelty, down in Hanover, Mass. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, champ. My pleasure. Thank you. Have a good go at it. He's a nice man. He's got a good sense of humor. And Sugar Ray has been on this, this show, too. And I don't like him. And what do they yeah. say? May the better man win? We'll see. It could right. be a good fight. We'll be back. Alan Thicke is here. And uh, Rebecca Arthur. <laughs> okay, my next guest, you all know. Very talented and busy actor. Alan, of course, the star of the hit series Growing Pains. He's just completed a television movie called Not Quite Human, which will be, as they say, on another network in May. Would you welcome Mr. Alan Thicke? Nice threads. Look like a new suit. Bought a new Thank suit you. for the show, huh? Yeah, these are. These, if you wear these three times, they're mine. Is the yeah, deal. very nice. How are you? I, I feel good. I saw you in makeup. Uh, you didn't get much tonight. You're tan. No, I I, uh, I am tanned. I was uh, uh, playing on a cruise ship one night last week in the Caribbean. I was mm. there on the on the lovely cruise ship Oceanic to celebrate their first year anniversary. You're playing. What do you mean you're playing on? Well, I have a band, and we go out and play some one nighters. And uh, this one was going well. We were. Uh, it seemed to be going well. We were rocking and rolling up there, and then apparently the ship started rocking and rolling more than I could notice because, yeah. uh, of course, I'm doing my incredible dance moves all this time. My, <laughs> Naturally. My little Caucasian you dance, shuffle. You dance also in this, uh, this Barely. review? Barely. Bombastic Barely. review? Yes. I didn't know you had a band. You travel? And... I, I do. We, yeah, I started out that way years ago, and uh, it's what, funny. What is the name of this band? Uh, well, the original band years ago in the fraternity was Jimmy Jack and the Rhythm Pigs. Kind of nice. Now, um, <laughs> this was nice very song, popular though. in fraternities, as you can imagine. It's, it wasn't big on the cruise ship, yeah. but I thought we were... We were doing well, and then, um, but uh, about ten minutes into the show, I noticed that the audience was starting to burp, and then <laughs> I thought, "All right, it's, it's fair enough." They had the Mexican buffet tonight, and I, and then I did a couple songs, and people are are like this, holding their sides, she said and. Well, it, yeah, it, it, finally, after 45 minutes, the people are leaving in droves. You know, I'm getting a trotting ovation from people going like this. And it's, you know, lunch overboard, and I thought, they're, they're, the ballad didn't go well. And, and it turned out that we were just on very choppy seas, and uh, uh, I thought I could see my whole career going into the Bermuda yeah. Triangle, you know, with nobody left at the end. Why did you sign a cruise? Is it fun to do a cruise ship? It's fun. I think that people, anybody who's ever done a cruise, they organize your activities activities all yeah. day and they play games you know you go to the to the deck and you they have Sounds games like a lot of fun well you have to see uh, you know they have a guy sitting in a deck chair like this and they put a balloon full of water on his lap and oh. his wife has to sit on the balloon and not break it and of course sometimes they break it and That's the it. guy's lap gets wet and people <laughs> laugh everybody has it's a fun. dream come true to go on that cruise. Oh, you can't uh, <laughs> And then, you know, it's... That takes care of Tuesday. That's the balloon oh, stuff. Oh, then like Wednesday, that. Wednesday you go to the pool, ah. and then they, the cruise director throws a handful of uh, kitchen utensils to the bottom of the pool, and you have to take a deep breath, and you dive in oh, and see how many golly. knives and forks you can stuff in your trunks. <laughs> and then so Wow, they, Wednesday must be a letdown after... Well, they operate... After two exciting days like that. <laughs> they operate on the principle that anything is funny if it happens in your pants. Ah. And... Uh, <laughs> Yeah, and like if you get I can them re wet, relate so to that, much, yeah. yeah. Now, what's this I hear? Somebody tells me you are doing. Is this to put on a sex seminar with Dr. Ruth Westheimer? Yes, I am. This is. Uh, in, I'm doing. A, a, I've been invited by the American Association of Sex uh, Educators, Counselors, and Therapists, and um, I'm. Uh, <laughs> and I'm. I, I think I'm. I'm with some big time sex people. There's Dr. Ruth. And, <laughs> And Sherry Height, authoress of the Height Report. So yeah, I so think I'm invited to. Well, what are your qualifications for this? Uh, I mean, seriously. I mean. Well, I lived at the beach for a while. Uh, <laughs> uh, 
Uh, that's good enough. Well, I was at Guacamole Massage Night of the Marine. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think it's because well, I play a psychiatrist on television. Well, yeah, but you a... play a psychiatrist. It's like that dimwit who says, I'm not a real doctor. I don't mean dimwit, I mean. <laughs> I, I always, it, it's a nice actor, but he comes and says, I'm, I'm not a doctor and then proceeds to promote some cough syrup or something. Yeah, well, I'm not exactly coming out and saying I'm a virgin, and I've n but I am, I am not an authority. I think I'm, I'm there to present the lay point of view of you. Well, well that's bad. <laughs> um, obviously, this is going to be a... Uh, obviously, it's a comedy symposium also. Well, I'm, I think You're I'm... breaking in the material here, <laughs> trying it out to see how it'll we'll go see on. see if here. Dr. Ruth likes it. Well, do you know, I mean, a lot about sexual problems? I mean, if somebody asks you a deep, serious question about impotency or something, can you address that question like Dr. Ruth? Not that one, no. no. <laughs> How about premature ejaculation? Could you address well, that? Uh, a premature exaggeration, I call your friend. You know. But these uh, are questions that people want to know. I'm just seeing what you know about. No, I think, in fact, I will. I don't be, mean to press you on this. I but think uh, I'll be bringing up the questions as the uh, because I think I do have a feeling that maybe there's a little too much of it in the media that maybe we're intimidated by what we read in magazines and, and books and what we're told by people with all due respect like Dr. Ruth that we must do. There's so much to remember. I think there's there's pressure. The manuals have instructions and diagrams. It looks like the Rams playbook, and you have to. <laughs> The flying Willendas couldn't do some of that stuff without a... If the Rams could just score that much, they'd be in better. <laughs> but that's a whole other thing. But anyway, that's a whole different thing. They go to the air. That's right. <laughs> so when is, when is this uh, little this thing is, take place? Huh? This is uh, on May the 3rd. Uh, so I have time is to do some more research. Is this, uh... Uh, no, no. Oh, I see. Um, but I've, I've already started my research. Now, you have young, you have children. I do. I have, have they come to you and ask you about... Uh, about sexual matters? Uh, not, not a lot. They're, they're still, they're pretty young, and I don't know oh, what are I'll, they. They're ten and twelve. Well, they're aware. They're aware. Well, they watch MTV. I think they have a pretty good. Um, but it, it, I think it's difficult to find anything that, that kids don't already know. I'm, I'm, I'm available to them, but uh, how do you explain to your children? Well, kids, I think at a certain age, and ask you a question, you give them a direct, honest response, but don't over-explain. Yeah. You know, give them the, just and not be embarrassed about it. Most parents are embarrassed. You know, they come and they hear something and they panic. Yeah, and the kid I, all says, says well, what, what's wrong? I, as soon as I get the, any questions, I call the Growing Pains writers. <laughs> I say, <laughs> really? how, how you... would we handle this? I think that, um, you know, they're just, I don't think that, that kids should really start until they can appreciate the guilt and the shame that goes with sex. <laughs> <laughs> <There's> a... <laughs> I think that, uh, you know, understanding the emotional angst that goes along with yeah, it is I know important. What you're saying. But uh, they do get exposure uh, very young through uh, yeah. and at school. And, you know, the. Uh, How was your sexual upbringing? Were you. Um, did your parents talk to you about it? Did you just pick it up in the schoolyard? Um, I, th I think it, uh, it was a combination of both. My dad wasn't that into talking about it. Uh. He uh, explained the facts of life to my sister by. But, well, actually, to her boyfriends by saying it's a, it's a lovely act uh, through which uh, uh, reproduction takes place, and if I catch you doing it with my I'll daughter, kill I'll kill you. Right. And, uh, but I think, you know, there's a... The, how do you explain to children? Menage a pee-pee? I don't know how to... Yeah. You know, they, the, um, Just you tell know, them, they, answer their questions. Sure, you know, go to Frederick's of Sesame Street and let them... Think of, I, I think it, it, they can be overloaded. Yeah, I think you're right. Too much and I think we are. You know, I think within the, in the books where it's you learn how to, when to, where to, you know, I think if you just knew who to, it would solve... <laughs> Is this... It would, it, yeah. You know, then, then. Is then this you one have, of your problems you, nowadays? Uh, well, I'm, uh, I'm uh, getting married July 1st. Yeah. It, uh... I didn't know that. Congratulations. Yeah, well, I haven't yeah. found anybody yet, but, but I think you just... <laughs> well, sometimes you have to set, you have to set a you know, limit I and... Uh, I don't sure. want to spend the summer alone. <laughs> That's, <laughs> also... That's right. I have the day off. Walking the beach is no fun by yourself. Going, hello, clam. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, how that works. We'll have to take a... Can anybody come to this uh, clinic? In case if I have an open day, when is this? Uh, well, I think... I guess anybody can go to the clinic, sure. I think yeah. they encourage uh, professionals. Oh, good. Well, it sounds more exciting than the cruise. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we'll take a break. We're going to be right back. Rebecca Arthur is here. <laughs> Yes, I have not met until this moment. 
She's a very uh, attractive young actor. She has a featured regular role on uh, Branch and Pichon's uh, girlfriend on the hit series, Perfect Strangers. Would you welcome Rebecca Arthur? <laughs> Seems like we've met before, somewhere. I don't mean really? that as, yeah. I would have remembered it. Well, that's very flattering of you. I just thought we had. Oh, no, I don't think so. Uh, how are you? Oh, nervous. What'd be the nervous for? You're God, I don't know. I've been dreaming of this for my whole life, and now I'm here, and I don't even know what to say. Well, would you say hi? <laughs> hi. Hi. I was told by Bronson Pinchot that when yeah. I came here, that I called him and I said, you know, you've done this before. Uh -huh. Tell me anything I need to know. And he said, well, for starters, they'll spell your name on your dressing room wrong. And I said, we? well, Bronson, you have a weird name. Yeah. There's no doubt in my mind they would. And he's, he said, well, just don't let it rattle you. I got here, and they did. And I laughed. I thought it was great. Who spelled your name wrong? <laughs> would you believe I only have one C? Oh. I'm sorry. Oh, I don't care. We're going to make you up a new card. Oh, it's like I came on here and complained, isn't it? That's all right. <laughs> that's all right. We should, you're, oh, we should spell rude. your name right. I mean, that's a very personal <laughs> thing. We should have spelled your name right. I hear some interesting things about you. I don't know whether they're all true, whether they're it's, it's, it's PR. They're, they're probably true. You're related in some way to one of the McCoys from the famous yes. Hatfield McCoy yes, feud? Yes, my great grandmother was Nanny McCoy. Really? She was married to John McCoy. And she was very similar to. Um, <laughs> they must have known her. I don't know. <laughs> but she was, she was, she was very crazy. Yeah. She lived until she was about ninety-six, and she was mean all the way up until then. Yeah. And but funny. She was yeah. just like Granny. And then somebody told me you were one time a detective. A private investigator. Who I used to look it? for missing people. Where, where was this now? Where? In New York City, I worked for J. M. Martin Investigations. How'd you get a job as a private investigator? And don't I look like one? Well, I don't know. I mean, you look very... I don't know what a private investigator looks like. Well, that's actually. just it. Um, nobody really knows what one looks like. So I saw this ad in the paper for actresses to train as private investigators, yeah. real-life Charlie's Angels. Mm -hmm. Well, I was afraid to audition as an actress, and I was poor and starving and broke in New York, working at a bank, and I... <laughs> not good job. Yeah. Not good for me. I don't know how to count. Well, no, I know how to count, but you know what I mean. It's like, how would you like that, sir? Anyway, I finally went on this interview with this man, and he said, um, his name is Jerry Martin, and he's met you before. But that's another story. Uh, was there some uh, intrigue yes, there that yes, I'm supposed to know about? Yes, pretty, pretty crazy. But anyway, when I went to see him, he said, um, um, we could, uh, you could never be a private investigator with your you know, neon hair and your Minnie Mouse voice. Everyone will remember you. And I said, well, can I work for free just to get the training? Yeah. And that just kind of hit a soft spot on him because he had to work for free to get mm -hmm. his license. 30 years, you know, prior to this. So about two weeks later, he hired me. Yeah. And my first case was in the Bahamas. What did you have to do there? Well, I had to follow this guy. We were trying to, we were investigating his sister. And um, I had to go because I was the shortest one that they had. They what, needed, what did that have to he do was it? only 5'2". And he thought he was a ladies' man, and I'm 5'4", so they said, oh, oh we'll gosh. send you. And I thought for sure it was white slavery. <laughs> I thought they were going to take me down there and sell me. Yeah. So I set up this, um, this code with my mother and my boyfriend. I said, if I call up and I say, so's, how's it going? That meant S-O-S. I started so, looking for me quick. how's it going? So's. So's. So's, how's it going? S-O-S. S-O-S, yeah. Right, I got it. That didn't happen, though. We actually were there for a case. Pretty, I actually... pretty tough code to break. <laughs> Well, you didn't get it right away, did you? No, I didn't get it right away. You're right. So I, um, it turned out we were really there for an investigation, and we were on a yacht. And Jerry's thing was always, you know... The Just the guy I met. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> you don't remember? No, I'm kidding. No, I um, he, His thing was, is I would rather have you back than the case solved. So we weren't really Charlie's Angels with the guns and risking yeah. our lives. So, um... I said, but we're going to be on a boat. So he goes, if it gets hairy, just get out. And I said, well, we're going to be on a boat. And he goes, yeah, just jump off and swim. I'm already in the Bahamas at this time. And I said, well, Jared, I don't swim, but I float really well. Yeah. But if they were shooting at us, can you see me in the water doing the backstroke like this, floating? <laughs> so obviously it turned out all right. It was fine. Yeah. Yeah, I you... just pretended I was going to throw up, and they usually let me off. Yeah. <laughs> so how's it going? <laughs> Remember that if we're ever in trouble. Soz. Boy, you couldn't break the CIA couldn't break that one. Soz, how are you? Oh well, you know. 
You got a you got a steady friend or boyfriend or yes. somebody like that? Yes. He yes, I do. He's a sweet. Well, you seemed uh, not sure. Well, last I heard, you see, he bought a house in Florida. But no, I'm just kidding. He's still in school. <laughs> I have that effect on man. Yes, you I do. Said, Love you, honey. Bye. Yeah. No, but yeah, he's. Have you had a lot of boyfriends? Is what you're saying, man? You... Oh no, not a lot. Yeah. No. This is a. a, a firm... I usually I usually stay with the same person for many years, mm -hmm. and then we move on. Don't ask me why. I don't know. Shows. <laughs> You did meet Jerry. You were doing a show. Well, you're now you're intriguing me. I don't know the man. J Jerry who, Martin? Jerry Martin. Yeah. He looks like a skinny Gojack. He's all bald. I actually used to cut his hair because he liked to have it all gone. You see, and he used to go to the barber, and I said, I gave him clippers for Christmas, and he said, now you get to do it. So I used to, I did his wife's hair also. <laughs> I'm not a hairdresser, but I like hair. Anyway. Where, where do I come into this story? I mean, I'm not. Okay. You were doing a show in New York, and you were doing, this is like many, going back several years, mm -hmm. and um, you were doing Magic Trick, and you asked for a volunteer from the audience, and no one would volunteer, so his friends pushed him up on stage. Right. Well, he is all, used to do magic also, mm -hmm. so he gave you a real rough time. He did? Yes. He did things like you told him to pick a card, and then, then it was like, well, I don't have the card anymore, and, and then he would take it out of your ear or something, and you got real annoyed with him, and you asked him what he did for a living, and he told you he was a bank robber. <laughs> Well, you anyway, were, you were right was... not to stay with him. <laughs> he was very naughty. And afterwards, yeah. he went backstage to I don't apologize. Re I don't remember the incident either. He went back to apologize to you and ask for your autograph. He said, I'm sorry, I know I was a real jerk. Oh. And you signed the death card to him. <laughs> Did I really? Well, I don't remember that incident. <laughs> so what else is going on in your life besides the show? I just got back from a cruise, speaking of Were you on a cruise? Yes. Did you play all the games that Alan was talking about? There seemed no. to be so much fun. No, mine was, mine was a little calmer than that. It was just like fun stuff. Oh, oh not me, that yours wasn't. <laughs> um, we'll be right back. Okay, before we go, Alan, you're going to... Uh... What, what, you're going to be ch playing charity hockey? Celebrity hockey for charity this weekend in Hartford, Connecticut with Michael J. Fox, Michael Keaton, and Ricky Dean Anderson. We have, a, we have a good team. We're playing against Gordie Howe and some, uh, All some right. uh, former All-Stars, so support that charity. Thanks for being with us. Are you, are you have any plans coming up? Or any? Just laundry. Laundry. You'll <laughs> be doing that at home, will you? Yeah. Good. Well, you're fascinating. <laughs> Do you come back and see us again? Of course. And we'll spell your name right this time. Oh, thank you. So is tomorrow night. <laughs> Sherman Hemsley from Amen, Baseball's Joe Garagiola, and uh, Dalton Stevens, who is, I guess, uh, called the Button King. <laughs> That's what he calls himself. Fast and fascinating man. <laughs> tomorrow, we'll all be here. Ed will be here. Thank you. I'm humbled by that applause.